Hello everyone and welcome to our second lecture uh, regarding um, Gaius Marius and of course Sulla. Now um, if you recall where we left off we were talking about Marius and Marius was a very successful Roman general. He spent um, a great deal of his very long life uh, defending Rome against uh, the Germanic invaders such as the Cambrians and um, being a big military reformer and things of that nature. However, um, as he aged, there was a war uh, with Mithridates. Um, and during this time, um, uh, he's going to find himself in exile. He's going to return. And he took back Rome and became consul, even though officially, even though he had much more power than that. And during that time, he had many of his enemies murdered, including Roman senators. Um, as the story goes, he had their heads severed and nailed to a rostrum. A rostrum, of course, is a, um, uh, you can think of it as, as a place where people speak. Uh, the Latin word rostrum actually means beak, but you could think of it as kind of like a, a place where people lecture, like a lectern. Um, so, you remember he had a counterpart who was becoming his enemy, the general Sulla. Sulla had won the rights to go fight the king of Pontus, Mithridates. Mithridates, um, if you recall, was uh, kind of there in northern Persia, uh, made a big empire for himself, and gained allies throughout eastern Mediterranean, uh, specifically the Greeks. Uh, one of these Greek cities, which was seen as the lead of them, the leader of them, was Athens. If you recall, Athens has often taken the leadership of the Greek people as a hegemon, that's strong power or leader power, um, within uh, Greece itself. And so, Sulla is going to invade Athens. He's going to conquer much of Greece. He's going to make an example of Athens, and he's going to have his troops go through the city. And through right of conquest, he's going to have his soldiers murder all of the citizens of Athens, women, children, and men, uh, and loot whatever they want. This is going to have propaganda value for the Romans because it's going to be a symbol that if you betray Rome, you're going to die. So remember, um, uh, this is where we get the idea of the mob from, the mafia. It's from um, essentially Rome. So they were very brutal. Poor Athenians. They didn't turn out that well. Um, Sulla is going to be victorious against Mithridates. Mithridates is going to call for peace. Um, and part of that peace is going to end the war. And also Mithridates is going to have to pay a large sum to the Roman people. Sulla, however, remembers that many of his friends and allies were murdered by um, by Marius back in Rome. And he's very upset with the Roman people. He's very upset with the Roman Senate. So he's going to send them a letter essentially saying, I'm coming back with my army. And you need to remember all the fine things I've done for you, and you betrayed me. The Senate, of course, wrote back to him, begging him for mercy. They didn't want to have the same kind of wholesale slaughter come into Rome. And um, this wasn't good for the Romans. The Romans were panicking. And you have to remember, too, that the Romans were very superstitious people. And so they were looking for signs and omens all throughout the place. And if you recall from a previous lecture, we talked about the legend of the Sabine books. When these books had uh, supposedly, like, decipherable prophecies about the future of Rome. And Romans would come and read these and try to decipher them in times of great conflict for their state. Well, unfortunately for them... Uh, the building containing these books burnt down, along with the books. Um, so the Romans probably saw this as their future going up in flames, while they had a hostile native army coming back. Sulla is going to come back to Rome. And when he does come back to Rome, there's going to be a bit of a skirmish, a bit of a battle, but Sulla is going to win. His army will enter Rome as will he, and he's essentially going to be a dictator in effect. Uh, his soldiers are going to go around the city and throughout Italy, murdering his enemies. 
just as uh, Marius had done before Marius passed. Um, <clears throat> eventually, um, coldly enough, possibly as an act of mercy, he came out with a hit list. Because not, not every Roman knew who was going to, you know, wind up with a sword in him. So, now they at least knew who was on the list, uh, but he also put a bounty on their heads. So, whoever was on the hit list and they got whacked, that person, whoever did it, uh, got a bounty. So, this went on all throughout Italy. And for some time after uh, Sulla was in charge for a while, he's eventually going to retire with his friends. And he's going to spend the next several months of his life hunting, feasting, stuff like that. And eventually he dies of causes I'm not certain of. So, um, politically speaking, at least po um, as far as reform, uh, he's not going to be emperor. He's not going to make massive reform changes or anything like that. But he is going to be another example of how in Rome, the Republic is going to become more and more of a facade to where the votes that go into place are going to have less power than the generals who command armies. And so we're going to see the democratic elements of Rome kind of wither away. Sulla doesn't wind up uh, killing all the people on his list, however. Uh, this is the best of the young Julius Caesar. When Julius Caesar was a young man, he was married to a family member who was an enemy of Sulla. Sulla is going to demand that Julius Caesar divorce his wife. Caesar says no, but Sulla eventually um, remits his descendants and spares his life. We're going to hear more about Julius Caesar later. He will, of course, come back and we'll see he's going to become dictator for life. Another person who is going to come back for us is this guy. This is Pompey. Um, Pompey was one of uh, Sulla's uh, lead officers. And when uh, Sulla did pass on, uh, many within the state did not want Sulla to have uh, Roman honors at his funeral. Uh, they saw him as an enemy, as like a bad guy. You know, he's going around doing all these slaughters. He broke laws. He turned the army against their own people. Uh, Pompey is going to say, well, hold up. Look at all the good things he has done for us. In many ways, he has been a hero of, um, of Rome, and he deserves um, all those honors. This won't make much of a surprise later on when we see um, how powerful Pompey himself becomes. Okay, folks, that's going to end it for today, and thank you for your time.